A guttural scream reverberated through the flesh-coated Iridian hive chamber as a swarm of the insectoid aliens sunk dozens of oozing proboscises into the spasming human girl's skin, pumping her full of mutagenic enzymes that would remake her into their monstrous new hive queen. Henry Adams watched Sarah's agonizing transformation with horror and disgust, bile rising in his throat, his own flesh webbed with pulsating tendrils inside an adjacent pod. The 28-year-old ex-Special Forces soldier had arrived on XK-731 just days ago with his five-man team, responding to a distress signal from the remote frontier colony, only to be ambushed and captured by seven-foot-tall alien monstrosities with razor-sharp chitinous exoskeletons. One by one Henry had watched helplessly as the Iridians cocooned his comrades Jack, Tom, Mike, Steve, Chris and Dave, their muffled screams fading as fleshy membranes smothered them into silence. The aliens had saved Henry and Sarah, the colony governor's daughter, for last. A towering warrior called Mira subdued Henry himself, slamming a neural disruptor into his skull. The pain had been beyond imagination. Paralyzed and imprisoned in living tech, he and Sarah had no hope of rescue or escape. The Iridians intended to absorb human DNA to birth an abominable hybrid queen. And Henry could do nothing but bear witness, struggling not to wretch, as Sarah's warping body accepted its grotesque new purpose, her shrieks turning into a keening, inhuman screech. Humanity's first contact with alien intelligence had become a waking nightmare. But even through the anguish, humiliation and despair, Henry Adams swore to himself that if these alien bastards didn't kill him first, he would find a way to avenge his unit, save the girl, and warn Earth. Because if the Iridians finished transforming Sarah and bred an army of human-Iridian hybrids, it wouldn't just spell doom for the ragtag XK-731 settlers. The insectoid monsters would gain the genetic keys to overrun mankind itself. Henry gritted his teeth, straining at his organic bonds with all his pain-racked strength. He didn't know how yet, but somehow he had to get free, grab Sarah and fight, or billions more humans would suffer her fate. The Iridians had started this war, and Henry would fucking finish it. Henry's muscles burned as he strained against the writhing organic restraints encasing his body. The Iridian cocoon pulsed and throbbed, almost seeming to mock his efforts. He snarled with rage, redoubling his struggle, refusing to accept this fate. A hulking insectoid form entered the chamber. Mira, the Iridian warrior who had captured him. Henry glared at her with pure hatred, still fighting his bonds, but Mira's voice echoed in his mind. Cease your futile efforts, human Henry Adams. I have not come to gloat or to harm you further. He froze, caught off guard by the unexpected telepathic communication. Mira continued. You have been chosen by Hive Queen Zara to prove your worth to the Iridian Hive. Our kind faces grave danger from the Zorgons, vicious insectoids who covet our territories and resources. My queen believes your human resilience and fighting spirit may help turn the tide if you are willing to become our ally. Henry barked a harsh laugh. You abducted me and my unit, slaughtered my friends and mutated an innocent girl. And you want me to help you? Are you insane? I offer you a chance to live and depart this world. The alternative is to remain cocooned until your life fades. What say you? He ground his teeth, mind racing. If he agreed, perhaps he could sabotage the Iridians from within, find some way to save Sarah and escape this hellhole. Fighting was better than slowly rotting. Fine, I'll play your game for now. But if you think I'll ever stop trying to kill you bastards, you're badly mistaken. Mira made a strange chittering sound, then the tendrils retracted, dumping Henry to the fleshy floor in a puddle of slime. He immediately lunged at her with a roar, but she easily sidestepped, seizing him by the throat with one massive clawed hand. She released him and strode out of the chamber. Coughing and massaging his bruised neck, Henry had no choice but to comply. He emerged into a vast subterranean labyrinth of twisting tunnels, illuminated by eerie bioluminescent light. Iridians of all shapes and sizes scurried about everywhere. Small workers repairing walls, winged messengers zipping through the air, elite warriors standing guard with wicked-looking biomechanical weapons. 
As Mira led him deeper into the hive, she explained, You will face a series of trials to test your strength and skill. The first is a gauntlet in which you must defeat many Iridian warriors in an arena. Prepare yourself. Henry's hands clenched into fists, so this was their game. Toss him into a pit and watch him dance for their amusement, like some expendable gladiator. Henry marched behind Mira through winding bioluminescent tunnels until they emerged into a massive circular arena. The space buzzed with the chatter of hundreds of Iridian spectators, their insectoid faces blending into a sea of twitching mandibles and glistening eyes. Mira led Henry to the center of the arena, where she handed him a set of sleek black armor that pulsed with organic energy. He pulled the lightweight plates over his body, surprised by how easily they adhered to his skin. Your weapon, Mira chittered, thrusting a long spear-like object into Henry's hands. The shaft was made of a dark, chitinous material, while the tip glowed with an eerie green bioluminescence. Henry gripped the alien weapon, testing its weight and balance. So what now? I just start fighting. How you will face three rounds of combat, Mira explained, her telepathic voice echoing in his mind. Each round will be more challenging than the last. Prove your worth, and you may yet survive. With that, Mira retreated to the edge of the arena, leaving Henry alone in the center. A hush fell over the crowd as a single Iridian warrior stepped forward, brandishing a wicked-looking blade. Henry dropped into a combat stance, adrenaline surging through his veins. Thax lunged forward, his blade slicing through the air with blinding speed. Henry parried the blow with his spear, the force of the impact sending shockwaves up his arms. The two warriors traded blows, their weapons clashing in a flurry of sparks and chitinous shrapnel. Henry's special forces training kicked in, allowing him to anticipate Thax's moves and counter with lightning-fast reflexes. He ducked under a sweeping slash, then thrust his spear forward, catching Thax in the midsection. The Iridian staggered back, green ichor oozing from the wound. Sensing an opening, Henry pressed his advantage, raining down a series of rapid strikes that forced Thax onto the defensive. The Iridian warrior's movements grew sluggish, his parries more desperate. With a final, powerful thrust, Henry drove his spear through Thax's chest, piercing the alien's heart. The crowd erupted into a cacophony of shocked chittering as Thax crumpled to the ground. Henry yanked his spear free, panting heavily as he scanned the arena for his next opponent. Two more Iridian warriors stepped forward, their armor adorned with intricate glowing patterns. I am Zex, one hissed. And I am Kryn, the other added. We fight as one. Henry barely had time to react before the pair attacked, their movements perfectly synchronized. He found himself on the defensive, his spear a blur as he deflected their relentless onslaught. Zex and Kryn worked in tandem, one attacking high while the other swept low, trying to find a gap in Henry's defenses. But Henry was no stranger to fighting multiple opponents. He fainted left, drawing Zex in close, then pivoted right, using the Iridian's momentum against him. Zex stumbled forward, his blade missing Henry by inches, and instead plunging into Kryn's shoulder. Kryn screamed in pain, his concentration broken. Henry capitalized on the opening, sweeping Kryn's legs out from under him and sending the Iridian crashing to the ground. Zex, enraged by his partner's fall, charged forward recklessly. Henry sidestepped the attack, then brought his spear down in a vicious arc, the glowing tip slicing through Zex's exoskeleton like a hot knife through butter. As Zex and Kryn lay twitching on the arena floor, the crowd's chittering reached a fever pitch. Henry turned to face Mira, his chest heaving with exertion. The towering Iridian warrior stepped forward, her eyes glinting with a newfound respect and a hint of challenge. You have fought well, human, Mira said, her telepathic voice tinged with grudging admiration. But now you face me. She lunged forward, her movements a blur of speed and power. Henry met her attack head-on, his spear clashing against her twin blades in a shower of sparks. They danced across the arena, their battle a deadly ballet of flashing blades and acrobatic leaps. Mira's raw strength and agility were unlike anything Henry had ever faced, 
but he refused to yield. He drew upon every ounce of his training, every hard-won lesson from his years in the special forces. He ducked and weaved, countering Mira's attacks with a combination of skill and sheer determination. The battle stretched on, minutes bleeding into hours. Both warriors bore the scars of their conflict, their armor cracked and ichor stained, but neither would relent. In the end, it was Henry's tactical mind that tipped the balance. He fainted left, drawing Mira into a powerful overhead strike, then dropped to one knee, his spear thrusting upward. The glowing tip caught Mira under the chin, the force of the blow sending her staggering back. Henry pressed his advantage, raining down a series of rapid strikes that forced Mira onto the defensive. With a final, desperate lunge, he closed the distance between them, his spear finding the gap in Mira's armor and piercing her side. The Iridian warrior let out a hiss of pain, her blades clattering to the ground. Henry stood over her, his spear leveled at her throat. For a long moment, the two warriors stared at each other, their chests heaving with exertion. Then slowly Mira bowed her head. I yield, she chittered, her telepathic voice tinged with a mix of frustration and respect. You have proven your worth, human. The arena erupted into a cacophony of cheers and shocked chittering, the Iridian spectators staring down at Henry with a newfound mix of awe and trepidation. He had done the impossible, bested their greatest warriors in single combat. As Henry stood there, his spear still leveled at Mira's throat, he felt a surge of triumph and a flicker of hope. Maybe, just maybe, he had a chance of surviving this nightmare after all. But the trials were far from over, and Henry knew that his greatest challenges still lay ahead. The crowd's raucous cheers still ringing in his ears, Henry followed Mira out of the arena, his mind reeling from the unexpected turn of events. As they navigated the hive's twisting corridors, Mira's telepathic voice echoed in his thoughts. Your performance in the trials was impressive, human, but combat prowess alone is not enough to earn the Queen's trust. Henry frowned, his grip tightening on his spear. What do you mean? I thought the whole point was to prove my worth as a warrior. The trials tested more than just your physical abilities, Mira explained. They were designed to gauge your adaptability your strategic thinking under pressure. These are the qualities that the Queen values most in a potential ally. As they walked, Henry noticed a subtle shift in the hive's atmosphere. The Iridians they passed seemed to regard him with a mix of awe and apprehension, their chittering whispers filling the air. Mira led him deeper into the heart of the hive, the tunnels growing wider and more ornate with each passing step. Finally, they emerged into a vast chamber that took Henry's breath away. Towering columns of pulsing, bioluminescent tissue stretched from floor to ceiling, their surfaces etched with intricate patterns that seemed to dance in the eerie light. At the center of the room, perched atop a raised dais, sat the most magnificent creature Henry had ever seen. Queen Zara was a vision of otherworldly beauty and power, her elongated head crest shimmering with iridescent hues, her exoskeleton gleamed like polished obsidian, and her compound eyes fixed Henry with an intense, unblinking stare. As he approached the dais, Henry felt a sudden pressure in his mind, like a weight pressing down on his thoughts. Henry Adams. Zara's telepathic voice was a whisper and a roar all at once, filling his head with its resonance. You have proven yourself a formidable warrior and a quick-witted strategist, but are you prepared to become something more? an ambassador for your kind, a bridge between our worlds. Henry swallowed hard, his mouth suddenly dry. I, I don't understand. What exactly are you proposing? An alliance, Zara replied, her mental voice thrumming with urgency. The Iridian Hive faces an existential threat from the Zorgans, a savage race of insectoids that seek to destroy us and claim our resources for their own. Alone, we may not survive their onslaught. But with the aid of human technology and military might, we could turn the tide. Henry's mind raced as he processed the Queen's words, an alliance between humans and Iridians. It seemed almost too incredible to believe. And yet the prospect of gaining access to advanced alien bioengineering and knowledge of the galaxy was tantalizing. 
And what would humanity gain from this alliance, he asked, his voice cautious. In exchange for your support, we would share our technological secrets with you, Zara replied. Our bioengineering capabilities far surpass anything your kind has yet achieved. Imagine the possibilities, enhanced human physiology, regenerative medicine, even the secrets of interstellar travel. All this and more could be yours. Henry felt a surge of excitement at the Queen's words, but he quickly tamped it down. As tempting as the offer was, he knew he couldn't make such a monumental decision alone. I... I need to consult with my own leaders before I can agree to anything. This is bigger than just me. Zara inclined her head, her compound eyes glittering. I understand you may return to your own kind to present our proposal. But know this. Time is of the essence. The Zorgans grow bolder with each passing day, and we cannot hold them at bay forever. Henry nodded, his mind already racing with the implications of what he had just heard. I'll do my best to convince them, but I'll need a way to contact you, to let you know their decision. Mira will accompany you, Zara replied, gesturing to the towering warrior at Henry's side. She will serve as our ambassador and ensure your safe return, and when you are ready, she will provide you with the means to communicate with us. Henry glanced at Mira, a flicker of unease passing through him. The idea of travelling with the alien warrior who had captured him was not a pleasant one, but if it meant a chance to save humanity from the Iridian's fate, he would do whatever it took. As he and Mira turned to leave the Queen's chamber, Henry couldn't help but notice the tension in the air. Some of the Iridians they passed seemed to regard him with open hostility, their mandibles clicking in agitation. He caught snippets of their telepathic chatter, whispers of dissent and opposition to the idea of an alliance with humans. Henry's gut clenched as he realized the true scope of what he was about to undertake. Not only would he have to convince his own people to trust the Iridians, but he would also have to navigate the treacherous waters of hive politics. With factions within the Iridians themselves opposed to the alliance, he knew that the path ahead would be fraught with danger and uncertainty. But as he emerged from the hive into the harsh sunlight of XK-731 surface, Henry squared his shoulders and set his jaw with fresh resolve. He had a mission now, a purpose that went beyond mere survival, and he would see it through, no matter the cost. Henry and Mira strode through the hive's cavernous launch bay, the towering Iridian bioship looming before them like a massive, pulsating insect. Its chitinous hull gleamed with an iridescent sheen, and tendrils of biocircuitry snaked along its surface. Henry's boots squelched against the fleshy floor as they approached the ship's gaping maw of an entrance. Mira paused at the threshold, her compound eyes fixing Henry with an inscrutable gaze. Are you prepared for this journey, Henry Adams? The path ahead is fraught with danger. Henry met her stare unflinchingly, his jaw set with determination. I'm ready. Earth needs to know about the Zorgan threat, and if this alliance is our best shot at stopping them, then I'll do whatever it takes. Mira inclined her head, a flicker of respect crossing her alien features, then let us depart. They stepped into the bioship's interior, the fleshy walls pulsing with an eerie bioluminescence. Henry suppressed a shudder as he settled into the co-pilot's seat, the organic controls molding to his hands like a second skin. With a shuddering groan, the bioship lifted off, its wings unfurling like massive, membranous sails. They tore through XK-731's atmosphere, the planet's harsh landscape giving way to the star-studded void of space. As they set a course for Earth, Henry couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in his gut. He glanced at Mira, her clawed hands deftly manipulating the ship's controls. Do you really think this alliance can work? That our people can learn to trust each other after everything that's happened? Mira was silent for a long moment, her gaze fixed on the viewscreen. Trust is a rare commodity in this galaxy, she said at last, her telepathic voice echoing in Henry's mind. But if we are to survive the Zorgan onslaught, we must learn to set aside our differences and fight as one. Henry opened his mouth to reply, but a sudden proximity alert cut him off. The viewscreen flared to life, revealing a cluster of angular insectoid ships bearing down on their position. Zorgans! 
Mira hissed, her claws tightening on the controls. A scouting party. They must have detected our biosignature. Henry's heart pounded as he scanned the tactical display, counting at least half a dozen enemy vessels. Can we outrun them? Mira shook her head, her mandibles clicking in agitation. They are too fast and our bioship is not designed for combat. We must fight. Henry swallowed hard, his mind racing. He was a soldier, not a starship pilot. But he'd be damned if he was going to let these Zorgan bastards take them down without a fight. All right, he said, his voice steady. What's our plan? Mira's compound eyes glinted with a fierce light. We use the bioship's organic systems to our advantage. I will pilot you man the defensive tendrils. Together, we will show these Zorgans the folly of underestimating the Iridian Human Alliance. Henry nodded, his hands already flying over the pulsing controls. The bioship shuddered as the first volley of Zorgon fire impacted against its hull, but Mira wove them through the barrage with preternatural grace, the ship's sinuous form bending and flexing like a living thing. Henry focused on the defensive systems, willing the bioship's tendrils to lash out at their attackers. The organic appendages whipped through space, ensnaring Zorgon ships and crushing them like tin cans. But the Zorgons kept coming, their weapons tearing through the bioship's armored hide. Alarms blared as the ship's vital systems began to fail, ichor leaking from ruptured conduits. We can't take much more of this, Henry shouted over the cacophony, his hands slick with sweat. Mira's telepathic voice was strained but determined. We only need to hold out a little longer, I have an idea. She sent the bioship into a dizzying spiral, the inertial dampeners struggling to compensate. Henry's stomach lurched as they dove towards a massive asteroid, the Zorgon ships in hot pursuit. At the last possible second, Mira wrenched the bioship into a sharp climb, the asteroid's jagged surface filling the viewscreen. The Zorgons, caught off guard by the sudden maneuver, plowed headlong into the rock, their ships crumpling like paper. Henry let out a whoop of triumph as the surviving Zorgon vessels scattered, their formation broken. Mira pressed their advantage, the bioship's tendrils lashing out to pick off the stragglers one by one. Finally the space around them was still, the wreckage of Zorgan ships drifting like macabre flotsam. Henry slumped back in his seat, his heart still racing. That was some damn fine flying, he said, turning to Mira with a grin. I guess we make a pretty good team. Mira inclined her head, a flicker of amusement in her compound eyes. Indeed, perhaps this alliance has a chance after all. As they set course for Earth once more, Henry felt a new sense of purpose settle over him. He and Mira had faced down certain death together and emerged victorious. If they could overcome their differences and fight as one, then maybe, just maybe, their peoples could too. The journey to Earth passed in a blur of hyperspace jumps and quiet conversations, Henry and Mira growing more comfortable in each other's presence with each passing day. By the time the bioship entered Earth's orbit, Henry felt a genuine sense of camaraderie with the towering Iridian warrior. But as they descended through the atmosphere, the weight of their mission settled heavily on Henry's shoulders once more. He knew that convincing the UEF High Council to ally with the Iridians would be no easy task, especially given the lingering mistrust and xenophobia that pervaded human society. As the bioship touched down on the landing pad of the UEF headquarters in New York City, Henry took a deep breath, steeling himself for the trials ahead. He glanced at Mira, who stood tall and proud beside him, her chitinous armor gleaming in the sunlight. Mira inclined her head, her compound eyes glinting with determination. Let us face your leaders, Henry Adams, and may the strength of our alliance be the key to our survival. Together, they strode down the bioship's ramp, the eyes of the world upon them. Henry could hear the murmur of shocked whispers from the assembled UEF personnel as they caught sight of Mira, their hands twitching towards their weapons. But Henry held his head high, his voice ringing out across the landing pad. Stand down, all of you. This is Mira, ambassador of the Iridian Hive. She comes in peace to seek an alliance against a common foe. The soldiers hesitated, 
glancing at each other uncertainly. But before they could respond, a tall, imposing figure strode forward, his uniform bristling with medals and insignia. Henry Adams, the man said, his voice a deep rumble. I am Admiral Xander Graves, head of the UEF military. I received your transmission. You have much to explain. Henry nodded, his posture rigid with respect. Yes, sir. But I think it's best if we discuss this in private. The fate of our species may depend on it. Admiral Graves eyed Mira warily, his hand resting on the butt of his sidearm. But after a long moment he nodded curtly. Very well, follow me. As they made their way through the halls of the UEF headquarters, Henry couldn't help but notice the stares and whispers that followed in their wake. He could sense the fear and mistrust that radiated from the human personnel, the centuries of ingrained prejudice against all things alien. But he forced himself to ignore it, focusing instead on the task at hand. They had to convince the High Council that an alliance with the Iridians was not only necessary, but vital to the survival of the human race. At last, they reached the council chambers, the massive doors swinging open to reveal a cavernous room dominated by a long, crescent-shaped table. The council members were already seated, their faces a mix of curiosity, apprehension, and outright hostility. Henry and Mira took their places at the center of the room, the weight of a dozen gazes pressing down upon them. Henry took a deep breath, then began to speak, his voice steady and clear. He told them of the Zorgon threat, of the relentless advance of the insectoid race across the galaxy. He spoke of the Iridians' desperate fight for survival and of Queen Zara's offer of alliance and shared technology. Mira stepped forward, her telepathic voice echoing in the minds of all present. She spoke of the horrors her people had endured at the hands of the Zorgons, of the countless worlds that had fallen to their onslaught. She pleaded for understanding, for cooperation in the face of a common enemy. The potential benefits of an alliance are clear, he rumbled, his voice carrying across the chamber. Access to advanced Iridian technology could give us a critical edge against the Zorgans, and the intelligence they could provide on our enemy's tactics and capabilities would be invaluable. But before he could continue, a sharp voice cut through the air, and what assurances do we have that the Iridians won't turn on us the moment the Zorgans are defeated? The speaker was a hawkish-looking man, with a severe, angular face, his eyes glinting with suspicion. How do we know this isn't just some ploy to infiltrate our society and undermine us from within? Henry felt a surge of anger at the man's words, but before he could respond, Mira stepped forward, her compound eyes blazing. Senator Thorne, she said, her telepathic voice dripping with contempt. I assure you, the Iridian Hive has no interest in conquest or infiltration. Our only goal is survival and the defeat of a common enemy. We come to you in good faith, seeking cooperation and mutual benefit. Thorne sneered, his lip curling. The word of an insect means little to me. For all we know, you could be in league with the Zorgans, using this alliance as a cover to weaken our defenses. The chamber erupted into a cacophony of shouts and arguments. The council members divided between those who supported the alliance and those who shared Thorne's suspicions. Henry could feel the tension in the room rising, the fragile hope of cooperation teetering on a knife's edge. And then suddenly all hell broke loose. A figure burst from the shadows behind the council table, a glinting blade flashing in its hand. Henry had only a split second to register the attacker's features. A human man, his face twisted with hatred and fanaticism, before the assassin lunged at Mira, the knife aimed at her throat. But Henry was faster. He leapt forward, tackling the assassin to the ground in a tangle of limbs and flashing steel. They grappled on the floor, the knife slashing through the air inches from Henry's face. With a final desperate heave, Henry wrenched the knife from the assassin's grasp, pinning him to the ground with a knee to the chest. The man's eyes blazed with a fevered light, spittle flying from his lips as he screamed. Death to the alien invaders. Humanity will never submit to the rule of insects. Henry felt a chill run down his spine as he recognized the man's uniform. The black fatigues of the human liberation front, 
a notorious terrorist group dedicated to the supremacy of the human race. He hauled the assassin to his feet, his grip iron tight. This man is a Zorgan infiltrator, he declared, his voice ringing out across the stunned chamber. He used the HLF as a cover to get close to the Council, to try and sabotage our alliance before it could even begin. The Council members stared in shock, the weight of Henry's words sinking in. Admiral Graves rose to his feet, his expression grim. This incident only serves to underscore the necessity of the Iridian Alliance, he said, his voice heavy with conviction. If the Zorgans are already attempting to infiltrate and undermine us, then we cannot afford to stand alone. We must unite with the Iridians and face this threat together. One by one the council members nodded their assent, even the once sceptical Thorn grudgingly acquiescing in the face of undeniable evidence. Henry felt a surge of relief wash over him, the tension draining from his body. But even as the council began to discuss the logistics of the alliance, Henry couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in his gut. The Zorgan infiltrator had been stopped, but he knew that this was only the beginning. As he glanced at Mira, her compound eyes glinting with a mix of gratitude and determination, Henry knew that the true battle was yet to come. The Zorgans would not rest until the Iridian human alliance was shattered, and the galaxy lay open for their conquest. But with Mira by his side, and the strength of their newfound bond, Henry felt a flicker of hope amid the gathering darkness. Together, they would face the challenges ahead and fight for the survival of their peoples, no matter the cost. Little did Henry know, however, that the seeds of betrayal had already been sown. In a shadowed corner of the council chambers, Senator Thorne slipped away, his expression twisted with a mix of fear and determination. He made his way through the winding corridors of the UEF headquarters, his steps quick and furtive. At last he reached a small, nondescript room, the door sliding shut behind him with a hiss of hydraulics. The room was dimly lit, the air thick with the stench of stale sweat and cigarette smoke. A group of figures huddled around a battered table, their faces obscured by the shadows. Thorne stepped forward, his voice low and urgent. The Council has approved the Iridian Alliance, he said, his words dripping with disgust. Henry Adams and his insect whore have poisoned their minds with talk of cooperation and mutual benefit. A figure at the head of the table leaned forward, his features resolving into a hard, angular face etched with scars. Then we must act quickly, he said, his voice a rasping growl. The purity of the human race cannot be compromised. The Iridians and all who support them must be eliminated. Thorne nodded his eyes glinting with a fevered light. I have already set a plan in motion, he said, his lips twisting into a cruel smile. When the time is right, we will strike, and the galaxy will tremble before the might of humanity ascendant. The shadowed figures murmured their assent, their eyes gleaming with a fanatic's zeal, and as Senator Thorne took his seat at the table, the room echoing with the whispers of the human ascendancy, the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, poised on the razor's edge between salvation and damnation. In the wake of the assassination attempt and the Council's decision to approve the alliance, the UEF and Iridian forces began to mobilize for a joint offensive against the Zorgon threat. Henry and Mira were called upon to lead a special operations team tasked with gathering critical intelligence on Zorgon positions and weaknesses. The team was a mix of battle-hardened human soldiers and elite Iridian warriors, each bringing their unique skills and abilities to the table. Henry and Mira oversaw their intensive training, focusing on building trust and cohesion between the two species. As the team members sparred and drilled together, Henry couldn't help but marvel at the way the humans and Iridians began to work as a seamless unit. The Iridians' lightning-fast reflexes and raw strength complemented the humans' tactical minds and adaptability, creating a formidable fighting force. Their first mission took them to a Zorgan-occupied planet, where they had received reports of a hidden research facility. The team infiltrated the planet's surface under the cover of darkness, moving silently through the dense, alien foliage. As they approached the facility, Henry's skin crawled with a sense of unease. 
The structure was a nightmarish fusion of organic and metallic components, pulsing with a sickly, bioluminescent glow. Mira's telepathic voice echoed in his mind. I sense great danger within, Henry. We must proceed with caution. Henry nodded, signaling for the team to take up positions around the perimeter. He and Mira crept closer, their weapons at the ready. Suddenly, an alarm sounded, and a swarm of Zorgan super-soldiers poured from the facility. These were not the typical insectoid warriors they had faced before. These Zorgans were larger, faster, and their exoskeletons shimmered with an unnatural sheen, as if they had been genetically engineered for combat. Henry and Mira fought side by side, their movements perfectly synchronized, as they cut through the Zorgon ranks. The rest of the team engaged the enemy, their weapons flashing in the darkness. The battle was fierce and bloody, but the UEF Uridian team held their ground. With a final desperate push, they breached the facility's defenses and fought their way inside. What they found within was a scene out of a nightmare. Rows of containment pods lined the walls, each one housing a twisted, genetically modified Zorgon specimen. At the center of the room stood a massive, pulsating tank, filled with a viscous green liquid. Mira's eyes widened in horror. A bioweapon, she whispered, her telepathic voice trembling, designed to target both our species. Henry's heart pounded as he downloaded the research data from the facility's mainframe. They had to get this information back to the Alliance to find a way to counter this new threat. As they fought their way out of the facility, the team was pursued by an endless horde of Zorgan super-soldiers. They barely made it back to their ship, the hull pockmarked with energy blasts and biological projectiles. Back at the UEF headquarters, Henry and Mira pored over the stolen research data, their faces grim. The bioweapon was even more terrifying than they had imagined, capable of targeting the genetic structures of both humans and Iridians with devastating precision. But as they delved deeper into the data, they uncovered something even more disturbing. There were references to a mole within the Alliance, a traitor who had been feeding the Zorgans information on troop movements and strategic plans. Henry's mind raced. Who could the traitor be? His thoughts turned to Senator Thorne and his anti-Alliance rhetoric. Could he be working with the Zorgans to undermine the war effort? Mira's voice cut through his thoughts. We can't trust anyone with this information, Henry. Not until we have concrete evidence. We have to keep this within the team and hunt for the traitor ourselves. Henry nodded, his jaw set with grim determination. They had fought too hard and lost too much to let a traitor destroy everything they had built. As they prepared for their next mission, a daring raid on a Zorgon supply line in a remote asteroid belt, Henry couldn't shake the feeling that they were racing against time. The Mole was still out there, working to sabotage the Alliance from within, and the Zorgons were growing stronger every day. A. In the cramped confines of their stealth ship, Henry and Mira briefed the team on the mission parameters. They would infiltrate the asteroid belt, planting explosives on the Zorgon supply depots and crippling their ability to resupply their frontline forces. It was a dangerous mission, fraught with the risk of detection and the ever-present threat of Zorgon patrols, but the team was ready, their faces etched with a mix of determination and grim resolve. As they approached the asteroid belt, the ship's sensors lit up with warning signals. A swarm of Zorgon fighters and capital ships were bearing down on their position, alerted to their presence by some unknown means. Henry's heart sank as he realized the truth. The mole had struck again, compromising their mission before it had even begun. The team fought with everything they had, their weapons blazing as they dodged and weaved through the asteroid field. The Zorgon ships were relentless, their energy beams slicing through the void with deadly precision. One by one team members fell, their lives snuffed out in the cold vacuum of space. Henry and Mira fought on, their ship a battered shell, its hull breached and leaking atmosphere. With a final desperate maneuver, they managed to detonate the explosives on the supply depots, setting off a chain reaction that ripped through the Zorgan fleet. The surviving enemy ships fled, their forces scattered and demoralized. As Henry and Mira limped back to friendly space, 
their ship held together by little more than hope and desperation, they grappled with the weight of their responsibilities and the toll the war had taken on their team. They had struck a blow against the Zorgons, but at what cost? How many more lives would be lost before this war was over? And always in the back of their minds, the knowledge that the traitor was still out there, working to undermine everything they had fought for. As the Alliance prepared for the final push against the Zorgans, Henry and Mira knew that they faced their greatest challenge yet. They had to root out the Mole, expose the traitor within their own ranks, and lead their forces to victory against an enemy that grew more powerful by the day. The fate of both their species hung in the balance, and the weight of that responsibility settled on their shoulders like a crushing burden. But they would not falter, they would not yield. For the sake of all they held dear, they would fight on, no matter the cost. The combined forces of the UEF and Iridian Alliance descended upon the Zorgan homeworld like a righteous hammer, their ships darkening the skies and their troops storming the planet's surface. Henry and Mira's elite team spearheaded the ground assault, cutting through the enemy's defences with precision and determination. Amidst the chaos of battle, a desperate transmission crackled through the comms. Zorgan High Command had initiated a doomsday protocol. They intended to unleash their bioweapon as a final act of spite, condemning both the invaders and their own people to an agonising death. Henry's gut clenched as he processed the intel. They had to stop that bioweapon at any cost. He turned to Mira, her compound eyes glinting with the same fierce resolve. We need to breach the capital city's defences now, he said, his voice steady, despite the urgency thrumming in his veins. Amira nodded, her telepathic voice echoing in his mind. Agreed. Time is short. We must strike swiftly. They rallied their team and punched through the outer perimeter, engaging hordes of Zorgan defenders in brutal close-quarters combat. Henry's rifle bucked against his shoulder as he mowed down wave after wave of insectoid soldiers, their ichor splattering the rubble-strewn streets. Mira danced through the fray, her biomechanical blades flashing as she carved a path of devastation. Together, they pressed forward, the capital's towering spires looming on the horizon. Automated defence turrets swivelled to track their advance, filling the air with a hailstorm of searing energy bolts. Henry and Mira wove through the deadly barrage, their armour scorched and pitted, never slowing their relentless charge. At last they breached the city's inner sanctum, blasting through layers of reinforced barriers. The underground bioweapon facility yawned before them, a maw of pulsing organic horror. They raced through the twisting corridors, following the signal of the bioweapon's containment chamber. When they reached it, Henry's heart sank. The chamber was rigged with explosives, wired to a fail-safe mechanism. Any attempt to tamper with the device would trigger a detonation, releasing the bioweapon into the atmosphere. Mira scanned the explosive array, her expression grim. The only way to disarm it is manually from inside the chamber, but whoever does so will likely be caught in the blast. Henry met her gaze, a heavy understanding passing between them. One of them would have to make the ultimate sacrifice. But as they argued over who would take the burden, a rasping voice interrupted them. A wounded Zorgon soldier lay slumped against the wall, his carapace cracked and oozing. Fools, he hissed, mandibles clicking. The detonation sequence has already begun, triggered by a remote signal from your own alliance. You have been betrayed. Henry's blood ran cold. The Mole had played their hand, dooming them all. But Mira's eyes flashed with a desperate idea. I will attempt to disarm the failsafe, she said, her telepathic voice resonating with grim purpose. I have knowledge of Zorgon systems that may give me an edge. You must hunt down the traitor and stop the remote signal, or all will be lost. Henry opened his mouth to protest, but the look in Mira's eyes silenced him. He knew she was right, it was the only way. Mira's thoughts brushed against his, a fleeting caress filled with everything unsaid between them. Then she pulled away, turning to the chamber lock. Henry steeled himself and signaled to the rest of the team. 
they had a mole to find and a detonation signal to sever. The fate of two species balanced on the razor's edge, and failure was not an option. Henry's heart pounded as he raced through the war-torn streets of the Zorgan capital, his team close on his heels. The remote detonation signal pulsed on their scanners, a mocking beacon guiding them toward the hidden mole. Rubble and debris crunched beneath their boots as they navigated the twisted alleys, the sounds of distant battle echoing off the shattered buildings. The signal's getting stronger, Jack called out, his eyes glued to the scanner. It's coming from beneath the city. Henry's mind raced. A hidden bunker, of course, the perfect place for the Zorgan leadership to orchestrate their last desperate gambit. He signalled his team to advance, their weapons at the ready. As they approached the bunker's entrance, a hail of energy bolts slammed into their position. Zorgan guards poured from the shadows, their chitinous armour glinting in the harsh light. But they weren't alone. Human figures in dark combat gear fought alongside them, their weapons spitting deadly fire. Traitors, Henry snarled, recognising the insignia of the human supremacist faction. He dove for cover, his rifle bucking as he returned fire. His team spread out, engaging the enemy with ruthless efficiency. They fought their way into the bunker, the confined spaces turning the battle into a brutal close-quarters melee. Henry slammed his rifle butt into a Zorgon guard's face, the alien's exoskeleton shattering under the blow. He spun, his blade flashing out to slice through a human traitor's throat. And then, through the chaos, he saw him. Senator Thorne standing at the centre of the command room, a triumphant sneer on his face. Henry's blood boiled at the sight of the man who had betrayed them all. Thorne! he roared, lunging forward. The senator laughed, his eyes glinting with madness. You're too late, Adams, he gloated. The bioweapon will be released, and from the ashes of this war, a new order will rise, a human order, with me at its head. Henry's vision went red. He charged, his fists slamming into Thorne's smug face. But the senator was faster than he expected, his body enhanced with cybernetic augmentations. Thorne countered, his blows fueled by an unnatural strength. They traded blows, their fury matched only by their desperate need to win. Around them, Henry's team fought to reach the detonation device, their blood and sweat mingling with the smoke and grime. Henry's strength began to wane, his body battered and bruised. Thorne pressed his advantage, his fists hammering into Henry's ribs. Pain exploded through his body, and he tasted blood on his lips. But then, a shout of triumph cut through the din. I've got it! Jack yelled, his fingers flying over the detonation device's controls, shutting it down now. With a roar of defiance, he surged to his feet, his fist connecting with Thorne's jaw in a sickening crunch. The senator staggered back, his eyes wide with shock and pain. Henry pressed forward, his blows fueled by a righteous fury. He rained down punches, each one a declaration of his resolve, his belief in the alliance they had fought so hard to build. Finally, Thorn crumpled to the ground, his face a bloody ruin. Henry stood over him, his chest heaving, his eyes blazing with the fire of victory. It's over, Thorn, he growled. You've lost. The senator spat a mouthful of blood, his cybernetic eye flickering. You think this is the end? You're a fool, Adams. There will always be those who resist your precious alliance. You've won nothing but a temporary reprieve. Henry's calm crackled to life. Mira's voice filling his ear. Henry, the bioweapon is secure, the facility is ours. He closed his eyes, relief washing over him like a wave. They had done it, against all odds they had prevailed. The bunker's screens flared to life, the haggard face of the Zorgon High Commander filling the display. UEF Iridian forces, he chittered, his mandibles quivering. We surrender. The war is over. Henry's team erupted into cheers, their voices rising in a ragged chorus of triumph. But Henry hardly heard them. His thoughts were with Mira, with the future they had fought so hard to secure. He hauled Thorn to his feet, the senator's once proud form now a broken shell. Get him out of here, he ordered, his voice hard. He'll answer for his crimes. As his team led Thorn away, Henry allowed himself a moment to breathe. The road ahead would be long. 
the scars of war not easily healed, but they had taken the first step. And he knew with a certainty that blazed within his heart that he and Mira would walk that path together. The organic door to the command bunker slid open with a hiss, revealing the battered but triumphant forms of Henry and his team. They emerged into the war-ravaged streets, the once-proud Zorgan capital now a smoking ruin around them. Distant cheers echoed through the air as word of the surrender spread, UEF and Iridian soldiers alike raising their voices in weary celebration. Henry blinked in the harsh light, his eyes adjusting after the gloom of the bunker. His gaze sought out one figure in particular, his heart clenching with a desperate need to see her, to know that she had survived. And there she was, Mira, her chitinous armor scorched and dented, her compound eyes gleaming with a fierce light. She strode towards him, her movements sure and strong, a warrior queen amid the ruins of their victory. Henry, she called out, her telepathic voice washing over him like a balm. You did it, we did it. He met her halfway, his arms crushing her to his chest, uncaring of the hard edges of her exoskeleton. He buried his face in the crook of her neck, breathing in her scent, a mix of battle sweat and something uniquely her. We did it, he echoed, his voice rough with emotion. But the cost, Mira, so many lives lost, and for what? The ambitions of a madman. She pulled back, her clawed hands cupping his face with a gentleness that belied their strength. They did not die in vain, Henry. Their sacrifice bought us this chance, this moment, a chance to build a better future, together. He leaned into her touch, drawing strength from her unwavering resolve. You're right, he said, his eyes hardening with determination. We'll honor their memory by making sure this alliance lasts, by showing the galaxy that humans and Iridians can stand as one. Around them, the soldiers of the UEF and the Hive began to converge, their wariness giving way to tentative camaraderie. Humans and Iridians alike clasped forearms, their differences forgotten in the face of their shared triumph. A flicker of movement caught Henry's eye, and he turned to see a group of Zorgan soldiers approaching, their postures submissive. At their head strode the High Commander, his once proud bearing now stooped with the weight of defeat. Human Henry Adams, the commander chittered, his telepathic voice heavy with reluctance, I have come to formally surrender the Zorgan forces to your alliance. Our war is over. Henry nodded, his expression grim. Your surrender is accepted, Commander. But know this. The crimes of your species will not be forgotten. You will face justice for the lives you have taken, the worlds you have ravaged. The Commander bowed his head, his mandibles quivering. We submit to the judgment of the Alliance. May our future generations learn from the mistakes of the past. With those words, the commander held out a data crystal, the formal terms of the Zorgon surrender encoded within. Henry took it, the weight of the moment settling on his shoulders like a mantle. He turned to Mira, a small smile tugging at his lips. Looks like we have our work cut out for us, he said, his tone wry. Rebuilding, diplomacy, all that fun stuff. Mira's answering smile was fierce and bright. As long as we face it together, Henry Adams, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. He took her hand in his, the gesture a promise and a vow. The war was over, but their true mission had only just begun, and with Mira by his side, Henry knew that no challenge was too great, no obstacle insurmountable. Together they would forge a new path, a new era of peace and understanding, and woe betide any who dared stand in their way. As the smoke of battle cleared, and the dust of war settled, the names of Henry Adams and Mira echoed through the halls of power on both Earth and Iridia Prime. The UEF Iridian Alliance, forged in the crucible of conflict and tempered by the bond between these two unlikely heroes, had emerged victorious against the Zorgon menace. Across the galaxy, celebrations erupted as the news of the war's end spread like wildfire. On Earth, crowds thronged the streets, cheering the return of their brave soldiers and hailing the alliance that had saved humanity from annihilation. And on Iridia Prime, the hive buzzed with a newfound energy, 
as Iridians of all castes came together to honor the sacrifices of their warriors and the courage of their human allies. It was against this backdrop of joy and relief that Henry and Mira found themselves invited to the Iridian homeworld to be honored for their bravery and leadership in the face of insurmountable odds. As their ship descended through the iridescent atmosphere of Iridia Prime, Henry couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the alien beauty that surrounded him. The capital city was a marvel of organic architecture, with towering spires of shimmering chitin rising from the jungle canopy, like the trees themselves. The streets were filled with iridians of every shape and size, their exoskeletons glinting in the golden light of the twin suns. At the heart of the city, in a vast chamber that pulsed with bioluminescent energy, the celebration reached its crescendo. Queen Zara herself presided over the ceremony, her regal form resplendent in a cloak of shimmering silk. As Henry and Mira approached the dais, the Queen's compound eyes fixed upon them with an intensity that sent a shiver down Henry's spine. Henry Adams and Mira, champions of the UEF Iridian Alliance, Zara began, her telepathic voice ringing through the chamber like a clarion call, your bravery and sacrifice have saved not only your own people, but ours as well. The Hive owes you a debt that can never be fully repaid. Henry bowed his head, humbled by the Queen's words. Beside him, Mira stood tall and proud, her chitinous armor gleaming in the light. But then Zara's tone shifted, becoming heavy with a weight that seemed to press down upon the entire chamber. And yet, even as we celebrate our victory, I must also look to the future of our people. The war has taken a heavy toll, and the Hive needs a leader who can guide us through the challenges that lie ahead. Henry and Mira glanced at each other, confusion flickering across their faces. What was the Queen saying? Mira, my loyal warrior, Zara continued, her voice softening with a mix of pride and sorrow. You have proven yourself time and again, not only on the battlefield, but also as a leader and a visionary. It is with a heavy heart, but also with great hope, that I must ask you to take on the mantle of Hive Queen. My Queen, she managed, her telepathic voice trembling. I am honoured beyond words, but surely there are others more worthy than I. My place is by Henry's side, fighting for the alliance we have built together. Zara shook her head a flicker of pain crossing her regal features. I am dying, Mira. A rare genetic disorder ravages my body, and my time grows short. You are my chosen successor, the only one who can lead our people into the future. Henry felt his heart clench, torn between his love for Mira and his duty to the UEF. He knew deep down that this was Mira's destiny, a chance to shape the course of an entire species, and yet the thought of losing her, of their paths diverging after all they had been through together, was almost too much to bear. In the end, it was Mira who made the decision. With a heavy heart, but also with a fierce determination, she knelt before Zara, her head bowed in acceptance. "'I will take on this responsibility, my queen,' she said, her voice steady and strong, "'for the good of the hive and for the future of our alliance.' As the chamber erupted into a chorus of cheers and chittering applause, Henry and Mira slipped away, finding a quiet moment amidst the chaos. They clung to each other, their foreheads touching, their breath mingling in the space between them. Mira's telepathic voice echoed through his mind, a caress of warmth and tenderness. And I love you, Henry Adams. Our bond is stronger than distance, stronger than duty. We will always be connected always fighting for the peace we have built together. In that moment, as the weight of their responsibilities settled upon their shoulders, Henry and Mira knew that their love would be the anchor that kept them grounded, the light that guided them through the darkness. They parted with a final lingering kiss, ready to face the challenges ahead. Mira, as the new Hive Queen, would lead her people into a new era of growth and prosperity, and Henry, as the UEF ambassador to the Iridians, would work to strengthen the bonds of the Alliance to ensure that the sacrifices of the war were not in vain. But even as they took their first steps down their new paths, Henry and Mira could feel the forces of change and uncertainty 
swirling around them. On Iridia Prime, whispers of discontent began to surface as traditionalist factions opposed Mira's progressive vision and her ties to humanity, and on Earth the remnants of Senator Thorne's human supremacist movement simmered in the shadows, waiting for their chance to strike. Henry steeled himself, knowing that the true test of the Alliance was yet to come. He would need all his strength, all his cunning, to root out the enemies that threatened the fragile peace they had fought so hard to achieve. Years turned into decades as Henry and Mira settled into their roles, their bond enduring, despite the distance between Earth and Iridia Prime. The UEF Iridian Alliance flourished under their guidance, the scars of war slowly fading as the two species worked together to explore the stars and establish new colonies on distant worlds. But even as they celebrated their hard-won peace, a new threat stirred in the depths of the galaxy. The Nexus, a technologically advanced and ruthlessly expansionist species, had set their sights on the UEF Iridian Alliance, their vast hive mind collective hungering for new worlds to conquer and assimilate. Henry and Mira, their skills honed by years of leadership, wasted no time in rallying their forces. Human and Iridian ships gathered in the void, united in their determination to protect the worlds they had fought so hard to build. As the Nexus Armada bore down on their defences, Henry and Mira led a daring strike team deep into enemy territory, their mission to infiltrate the Nexus hive mind and sever the connection between the drones and their central consciousness. They fought their way through the Nexus's advanced defences, their weapons blazing as they cut down scores of mind-controlled thralls. The air thrummed with the hum of Iridian psionic blasts and the crack of human pulse rifles, the two species fighting as one against the relentless onslaught. At last, they reached the heart of the hive mind, a vast chamber pulsing with eerie, sickly light. Henry and Mira exchanged a look of grim determination, knowing that the fate of their alliance rested on their shoulders. Together, they linked their minds with Iridian telepathic technology, Henry's human ingenuity, and Mira's psionic prowess working in tandem as they prepared to overload the hive mind's central processor. But as the psychic energy surged through the hive mind, Mira let out a cry of agony, her body convulsing under the strain. Henry, his heart in his throat, poured every ounce of his strength into the link, desperate to protect his beloved partner. Mira's telepathic voice echoed in his mind, a whisper of love and sorrow. I'm sorry, Henry, but this is the only way. With a final searing burst of psychic energy, Mira severed the connection, the feedback tearing through her mind like a raging inferno. The hive mind let out a deafening shriek as its consciousness unraveled, the Nexus drones collapsing like puppets with their strings cut. Henry gathered Mira in his arms, tears streaming down his face as he cradled her lifeless body. The Nexus was defeated, the UEF Iridian Alliance victorious, but the cost had been too high. In the aftermath of the war, Henry retreated from the public eye, his heart shattered by the loss of his soulmate. The Alliance endured, a testament to the bond he and Mira had forged, but for Henry, the light had gone out of the universe. The years passed in a blur of grief and bitter memories, until at last an old and weary Henry found himself standing before Mira's grave on Iridia Prime. He knelt in the soft alien soil, his fingers tracing the glyphs of her name, etched in stone. I miss you, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. Every day, every moment, you were my everything, Mira, my partner, my love, my reason for fighting. He bowed his head, tears falling like rain on the cold, unyielding stone. I know now the price of peace, the sacrifices we made, the blood we shed. It was all for this, for the future we dreamed of together. Henry rose to his feet, his eyes fixed on the horizon, where the twin suns of Iridia Prime dipped below the distant mountains. I'll keep fighting, Mira, for you, for our people, for the alliance we built. Until my last breath, I'll carry on your legacy. He turned to go, his steps heavy with the weight of his years. But as he walked away, he could almost feel Mira's presence beside him, her spirit guiding him onwards, towards the stars they had once dreamed of exploring together. 
and though his heart was heavy with sorrow, Henry knew that in the end their love and sacrifice had been worth it, for in the face of the darkness they had been a light, a beacon of hope for the future they had fought so hard to build. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.